I'm Dr. Alan Partridge, Adobe eLearning Evangelist. I'd like to tell you a little bit more about the amazing new high-definition video screen capture that you can do with Adobe Captivate 6. Let's take a look. As you begin with Captivate 6, you'll notice that there's a new Create New Video Demo option. Go ahead and click that to begin capturing a high-definition screen capture of video. I decided today it would be good to start by using this little website with the uh, cooler color. Uh, it's cooler.adobe.com. I can select any application on my computer or I can select all of the applications on my computer at once. Uh, I can then go in and select a window to record if I choose application mode. And I can even choose a custom size. In my case, I'd like to have the size be 1024 by 768. So I've got the size all set to go, and now I'm going to be able to work with my specific video capture. You'll notice some of the settings are familiar. You can still do panning, though you won't really need to because the new high definition video mode actually supports pan and zoom natively. You can also record the audio. So if you want, you can record the audio that you're actually using uh, while you go ahead and do it. There are additional settings that you can access through the settings button. Well, the settings dialog will come up and once the setting dialog comes up you'll see that you have the option to show the mouse in video demo mode i'm going to go ahead and leave the mouse shown in video demo mode and we'll see some cool things that we can do with that in just a minute now we're ready to actually record our capture so i'll click on record and at the prompt i'm able to begin my recording i'm actually recording uh, using the recording mode right now and you can see that I can actually create based on an image or I can recreate from a color so if I wanted to use the color for example I can grab a hold of the color element and move it around that's pretty cool all of these features of the Adobe cooler color site but the reason that I wanted to show this to you was because this actually allows me to very quickly show you something where all of the colors are being adjusted real time. So you can see high definition video capture is actually capturing real time, including complex motion. So even if I had video on here or complex 3D graphics, it really wouldn't matter. Anything at all can be captured. When I'm done, all I have to do is click on the Captivate icon and then it will go back into Captivate into the video capture mode. Now I'm not too worried about having excess at the beginning or at the end of the clip because as you can see I'm going to have all kinds of options to be able to edit. But you also have the option to simply take everything you captured and automatically publish it directly out as an mp4. You can use this button to publish it as mp4 or use the button next to it to publish it straight to YouTube if you prefer. You can also click here on the edit button and the edit button will open up the Captivate interface for editing. Now this is the Captivate interface, but there are a few differences because this is a Captivate video project rather than a Captivate standard project. So you'll see at the top it's labeled CPVC and that lets you know that it's a special video project. If you had a different project open, let's just say you created a new blank project in Captivate, all you have to do is open it up like so, but you'll notice that when that new project comes open, its interface will look slightly different. So the interface for standard editing in Captivate looks slightly different than the interface for video editing. One big reason is that you don't have the thumbnails in the video edit mode. Instead, you have a timeline down here across the bottom. Now, if you haven't worked with video timelines before, they're pretty simple. They work from left to right, and the indicators here tell you how long it has been in duration the yellow handle on the left will actually allow you to move the starting position of the video. There's another handle there and that's this little red handle. And this is called the playback indicator or the playback marker. And this will actually move the video position. It allows you to do something called scrubbing the timeline. Scrubbing the timeline is when you move the video back and forth along the timeline using the red playhead. Now you can also simply play the video back using the shuttle controls down here at the bottom. You can see the familiar play icon and when I click it automatically the video will play. I can also rewind the video by using the rewind button there as a second option. Now all of that is controllable there from the shuttle. I also have the ability to do a number of pretty cool things with the video once I get started. So for example I can pan and zoom. Let's say for example that I found a moment inside the video and I wanted to zoom in 
on that flower. So I'll find that moment and I will add a pan and zoom. And when I add a pan and zoom, I am then free to go ahead and zoom into the flower at that moment in time. Notice how the view, the preview of the video actually shows it to me. I can realign it just by clicking and dragging and I can put this wherever I want it to be. So now I have that zoomed in and panned to the position that I want. Maybe I want it to zoom in slower or faster. Control the speed here using this element and set it as long as you like. You'll notice that there's a ramp off the magnifying glass to indicate that this is the moment of the zoom where the zoom reaches its ultimate point and this is the ramp where it's transitioning from one to the other. Let's scrub the playback in order to see what that zoom looks like. You can see that it zooms over a period of time into the destination point. If I wanted to go back to the total screen view after that, all I have to do is click zoom out and then automatically a new zoom will be added that will automatically zoom out to that new position. I can of course play that back inside the Captivate interface as well just by clicking rewind and then play. And when I do so, you'll see that of course that zoom has been added and that it plays back through. And of course you can get the zoom back out as well. You can not only zoom, you can also pan. And one of the nice things that they've added is the ability to move these elements around in the timeline. So if for example, I change my mind and decide I want to zoom out at a later point, I can just move that down in the timeline. Then I can go back in here, say 10 seconds. And at 10 seconds, maybe I decide that I actually want to have a different pan and zoom effect. I click on add pan and zoom and that'll add that element into my project. And now notice that it remembers the last position of the camera. Let's say that I wanted to zoom over after the pan to show the user these little options on the menu. No problem, I can just move that over. I can even zoom it out a little bit if I want to. It's really up to me how I want the application to behave, right? And I can also control, of course, the speed. So now I have a more complex effect. I have a zoom, then a pan and zoom, and then finally we'll zoom back out, and I'll move that into like 12 seconds. Now when I rewind, we can see the effect again. First the zoom in to the flower, then the pan across and the slight zoom out, and then finally the full zoom out. And you get these beautiful smooth transitions. You're able to see exactly what you had intended. So it's a really nice way to be able to handle those kinds of elements. Let's look at another cool feature. Let's say that I wanted to split this video and I wanted to do something different. I could bring other video in here. I can move this video into a new position. I can alter the transitions in the video. So I really have a lot of power in the way that I work with it. I want to put a transition here. So I'll click on the diamond to choose a transition and then I'll scroll down and find the transition that's right for me. Maybe I wanna do this up rolling transition for whatever reason, and I can just attach it that way. Now, when the playback head reaches that point, I'll automatically get the rolling effect transition at that moment in the timeline. Now notice here that it transitions to a blank page, and that's because I've moved things over in the timeline. I'm gonna just shrink that down so that you can see the timeline in its longer form. And you can see that I've actually moved that other part of the clip all the way out there to like 15 minutes. What I wanna do is I wanna put another element in here at that moment in time. And that element can be one of any of the passive or non-interactive elements that exist inside of Captivate. So if, for example, you wanted to add a text caption or a highlight box or even an image or an animation, you can add any of those elements into your video. Let's add an image now. I'll add this image of cherry blossoms and we'll bring it in and I'll just put it on the stage area and I think I'll fill out the entire stage area. So to do that, I'm going to just zoom out a little bit so that I can see everything. I'll move things around and then I'll put this across where I wanted it to be. And now I've got that transition happen. I will zoom the uh, timeline again so that we can see our project up through that point. And I'm gonna move that image, which you see now appears in a layer, over to the other side of the transition so that that image actually happens on the opposite side of the transition. Now I'm free to go ahead and replay that transition and see what happens differently. So I'll play it back. 
and you can see we get the lovely transition to the second form. We could also put other videos in there. You can also put in picture-in-picture -picture videos, animations. You can even use the new characters from Captivate in order to insert characters into your project. Just choose a character that you like and then say OK and automatically it'll insert the character right into your video panel. Of course you're also able to use all of those amazing smart shapes. So if you wanted to have this character speak, all you have to do is draw it in and then move the pointer to the appropriate location. So I'm going to go up here to the edit menu and choose edit mouse points. When I do that, I'll see that a number of little mice appear on the timeline. I can click on any of those little mice inside of the timeline and automatically you'll see that an actual little graph of the motion of the mouse appears there on the Captivate space. I can actually then move the mouse around inside of the window in order to get the mouse to go to the location that I prefer. That's so nice because it means that now suddenly you're able to actually work and edit and change the mouse even after you've created the video. And it's a really nice addition and a nice way to be able to customize the look and feel of your completed video capture. So as you can see, the new pan and zoom, the transitions, the ability to edit the mouse, the ability to layer elements on top of elements, work with multiple layers of video, and even edit the sound right inside of the video editing application gives you all kinds of power in the new high definition screencasts from Adobe Captivate 6. Now it's up to you. Take a look at the new video editing capabilities inside of Captivate 6. Let me know what you think.